Here's an example of using spherical coordinates to do uh, a triple integral. So I've got the upper half of a, uh, a ball, and so it's everything above this blue plane through the equator. Um, it goes up to z equals 2, right here is z equals 1, and it's got radius equals 1. And I want the mass if the density is proportional to 1 over the distance from the origin. So it's inversely proportional to the distance from the origin. Okay, so it's going to be densest here, not so dense here, not so dense here. Okay, so the density, unfortunately we use rho sometimes for density and for the spherical uh, <laughs> radial coordinates. I'll just kind of density equals d is k over rho. And physicists would use an r here. Lots of people would use an r for the radial coordinate, but we're using rho in accordance with our book. Um, okay, and so we want the integral over this three-dimensional region of density times dv, because that's a little bit of mass, mass times density times volume, um, or in other words, integral k over rho. And we're going to try to use spherical coordinates here. It's going to work out nicely. We've already we've got some rotational symmetry about the z-axis, so we should at least use cylindrical or spherical. And cylindrical wouldn't be horrible. We'd get like a z as a function of r. We'd have like some square roots and stuff. So we're going to use the spherical volume element, rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Kind of squeezing it in there, okay. And of course, one of the big things is setting up what the limits are, okay. So let's see what those turn out to be. Uh, this is going to be nice. So the one reason to do this in spherical, of course, is that this is rho, and so that's going to be expressed nicely. So the integrand is expressed nicely in any any integral, any definite integral. There's the region, which determines the limits. You'd like to make that simple, if possible. There's the integrand. We'd like to make that simple, and we certainly have. It's as simple as it gets by using spherical. And we'd like to have the differential be simple. And there's a price to be paid by using spherical, but if, by getting this differential, but it's not usually that much of a price to pay. OK, but now this, we have to see how nice that is. Well, um, and then, then, of course, these guys are going to cancel. So it's going to be, the integrand is actually going to be k, oh, no, it's going to be k rho. There we go, sine phi. And it's not, you don't have to always do it in this order, d rho d phi d theta, but more often than not, n simple and nice things have rho as a function, the radius as a function of the angular variables and not the other way around. Now here, the symmetry around the z-axis means that theta is, um, goes all the way from 0 to 2 pi and nothing depends on theta. So we'll put that in as a 0 to 2 pi there, and that's going to be mean we can just gonna in integrate that out right at the start. Okay, oh, and that x is not part of our algebra there. Okay, so what about phi? Well, phi, you want to think of as kind of a radar beam, kind of like polar coordinates. Can, if I look at a radar beam going with phi equals zero, does it intersect the object? Absolutely. Bigger phi, bigger phi, yes, but less and less of the object until I get to here. Okay, that's where z equals one and cylindrical r equals one. Don't be afraid to use cylindrical as a stepping stone to spherical. Well, z equals r, that's 45 degrees, and so that's phi is pi over four. So it's going from zero to pi over four. And then for a particular radar beam, pick one in the middle maybe. Oops, you don't need to see that. Okay, we're going to have, um, it's going to go from this bottom to here. Okay, so now the bottom is going to be, that's where z equals one put down here. It's where z equals 1. Well, z is rho uh, cosine phi equals 1. Okay, and this is probably going to be the, the most complicated part of this guy. This is going to be rho equals secant phi. Okay, so that's going to be a little complicated. Uh, this is going to go from secant phi to, okay, now this one this guy, we have to figure out what the equation for that is. Well, if you slice it with 
a vertical plane, it just turns into polar coordinates with r and phi as the coordinates, and this the up being the polar axis. And a circle, the slice there is a circle, center one, radius one. That's a pretty well-known polar guy, and that's going to be rho equals cosine phi. Another way to do it is to set it up. Let's see if I can erase this stuff. Another way to do that is to set it up as a usual equation of a sphere, um, x squared plus y squared plus z minus 1 squared, because so, it has center 0, 0, 1 equals 1. Uh, that's x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is rho squared minus 2z plus 1 equals 1. Those cancel. So rho squared equals 2z, which is 2, uh, oh, that's a 2 cosine phi, my bad. Rho squared, I'm glad I redid it. Rho squared equals 2 rho cos phi. Cancel the rows, which is legal because we're going to get rho equals 0 anyway out of just rho equals um, cos phi, and phi is pi over 2, for example. So that's just going to, again, say rho equals 2 cos phi. So there's my outer limit. Okay. So now, let's see what that turns into. I can go up here. Okay, so that goes up here. And so it's going to be 2 pi. That's just integrate out the theta right, right off the bat. Only works if you have no thetas in here, but it does work here. Um, integral 0 to pi over 4. Oh, there's a k that comes out of here. I've got a timer going off. It's going to be really annoying to listen to. Okay. And, okay, so um, the sine phi is just going to come through. That's a constant as far as the rho is concerned. And I'm going to get integral rho d rho, so it's one half rho squared from here to here. So I'm going to get one half of 4 cosine squared phi minus secant squared phi. Okay. And then all times that sine phi d phi. So we did that one easily as just multiplying by 2 pi. We did the row integral, and now we're just down to one integral. That cancels that guy. So pi k. Okay, so now how are we going to do this? Okay, well the nice thing is we can do a u sub. We're going to do u equals cosine phi. du conveniently is minus sine phi d phi. So that's that up to a minus sign. And then the limits are going to go from cosine of 0, which is 1, to cosine of pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2. That's a backwards integral from a bigger value to a smaller value. We're going to fix that in a second. Then this is going to be 4u squared minus 1 over u squared times minus du. And I don't like the minus sign, and I don't like the backwards integral, and I can just use the minus sign to switch this, which I usually would do. Okay. Now, oh, I almost used my, tried to use my cell phone as an eraser. That would be really good. Yeah, here's the phone. Okay. So, now we've got pi k, and now this is pretty easy. This is just going to be uh, 2, no, no, sorry, 4 thirds u cubed plus 1 over u, all from root 2 over 2 to 1. And so it's pi k times uh, 4 thirds plus 1, so 7 thirds minus 4 thirds root 2 over 2 cubed is 1 over 2 root 2. And that can simplify a little. Well, let me just call it 2 root 2 over 8. And that all cancels. And then plus root 2. Okay. So it's pi k times 7 thirds minus root 2 over 3, but then another root 2. So it's really 4 thirds root 2. Okay. We should check that that's actually positive. Okay. Well, 4 root 2 is about uh, 5.6, 5.7. That's less than 7. And so this is actually greater than 0. So it makes sense as a mass. Okay. So that's an example of using spherical in a sort of moderate case.